afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation, Miriam. I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I work uh, essentially right on the other side of the channel in northwestern France and specifically Brittany. So it's a great pleasure for me to be here and, uh, and exchange with my English colleagues because I'm very interested in what happened here in your country, uh, we are so close. So I'm very glad and I hope it will be an occasion for future collaboration together. Um, however, I, I don't really know what to present today because uh, uh, since uh, uh, 2013, I'm not in charge of uh, excavation of a rock shelter, so it's not really on the topic. And I'm also in charge of a research program about rock shelters. <laughs> uh, actually, we are in uh, opposite research dynamic at the moment in Brittany, because since the beginning of prehistoric research, we uh, focused on open air sites and excavated a lot of open air sites. And now we are realizing that uh, even if we don't have limestone context with big caves and large shelters like, like you have, uh, we do have also small rock shelters uh, which were occupied during prehistory. They are just small spaces on the boulders and these kind of things. And so we are now focusing on this side in order to complete our picture of uh, paleoeconomic uh, models. So that's why. So I think about it and I decided to present a site I excavated in, uh, almost 10 years ago now. And, uh, and to see what this open air site can bring uh, as information for the the very end of the, of the late glacial in Western Europe. So this site is named La Fosse. It's not, I, I won't trust it in French, but it's not really good for a site. And um, it, it's an important site because it, it, it changed our mind about um, lithic technology. It brings us very important information about lithic technology of the last paleolithic communities, but it also contributed to uh, our understanding of uh, paleoeconomic system of these last uh, paleolithic Society. So the site is located in Mayenne, which is a region between the Paris Basin and, and Brittany. And more specifically, the site is located in a big alluvial plain in the largest meander uh, of the river. And it was discovered by uh, an avocational archaeologist um, between the river and a large quarry. And so we only excavated 120 meters square, which is pretty small, but the site is it's pretty big, yeah, but probably destroyed or at least recovered by the query. The query is right here. Everything here is a big query, and the site is here. But the survey we did and the testing we did at this period show that uh, the site was much larger, with an extension probably of three hectares, with only um, GS1 Holocene transition uh, materials, call it long blades for the moment. Um, so, we don't have bones in Britain, the soil is too acidic, so we only work on lithics and the technological study of the lithic assemblage, uh, 40,000 artifacts or so on, um, show us very good similarities with the GS1 of the same transition sites. Um, and that's a very interesting period, as you probably know, because there is a major change in lithic technology. Uh, with the return of normalized bread production uh, after a long period of progressive uh, simplification of uh, lithic technology during the Phalaenocene or Brazilian, for me it's kind of the same, so after the end of the Magnolian. And, and these big changes, this return of the blade production, uh, comes with um, several phenomena, like the return of tool blades as the main objective of production, contrary to the Brazilian, where Blanks for the projected points are the main objective of production. A more selective raw material use, a great diversification of projected points, and a very important normalization of tools. So we are right here at the very end of the GS1 and probably more at the beginning of, of the preboreal. But we have this plateau, which is uh, complicated. Uh, so, finding site for this period is not a scoop at all. Um, Aim of the late glacial site are very common in northern France and here in England. Um, uh, this site are very particular in general with low proportion of retouched tools, um, large concentrations of debitage west, um, not really clear dwelling structure, and these sites were called in northern France Beloisian, and here, long bed assemblages. 
In both cases, the main characteristic of this production is supposed to be the length of the blade, as we saw yesterday. Um, with this side, I will try to show you that the situation is maybe less clear if we try to think about a more a wider area and this length of the blade is not maybe this important. Hopefully you get what I said. I hope my English is not too bad. <laughs> uh, so, for me, um, with this research in Northwestern France, uh, length is important, but it's more um, an optional character and an optional character directly linked with the geological context, linked with the um, raw material availability. Um, these blades are regular, they are normalized, they are straight in profile, and my research also suggests this blade to be very flat in section. That means very large and thin with acute cutting edges, and I think that's the most important characteristic of these productions these cute, uh, acute cutting edges. So this was initially recognized at La Fosse and in other sites in northwestern France, and we are now able to recognize this kind of patterns um, in southwest France with my colleague Mathieu Langlais. And recently, it was also recognized in the third place in northern France after a study re-evaluation of, of, of the collection of, of this region by my colleague Corey Um I think this characteristic is pretty characteristic uh, of this industry over a large area, um, probably from Spain to northern Germany at least, uh, where you can find this particular flatness and straightness of, of the blade. And so I'm thinking about a large techno complex regrouping several uh, traditions, like the late Laborian or the APR Belgian or whatever. And I think long blades sites or Belouazian sites I mean, my definition of long blade and the Western sites are only functional facets of these various traditions inside this large techno complex. Um, so, the production of these flat blades implies very risky methods because if you want flat and straight blades, you need to have surfaces with low lat lateral and longitudinal convexities. Uh, that means it's very risky, you can have a lot of accidents. So, to, all the production is, is uh, oriented toward um, the obtention of, of, of this blade, and so they use soft stone hammer. The prog progression of production is very special. The flakes are only used to, um, to reinitiate the, the reduction, and they use two opposite platforms with various uh, rhythm. rhythm? The importance of flat blade is also um, suggested by the user analysis of this material. Um, the entire assemblage was uh, studied by a user analyst, Jeremy Jacquet, and he showed that, um, um, that the, the, the blades were intensely used and retouched. Um, all of these flat blades with acute cutting edges were used and retouched. And it's, it's a large part of the toolkit. And um, retouch tools like scrapers or burins were regularly recycling blades initially used and retouched. So blades were firstly used and retouched and sometimes after recycled to uh, scrapers and burins. So this, strange, this strategy, but also the maintenance strategy we identified in the site uh, suggest a constant desire to take advantage of the acute cutting edges of the blade. So both technology and user study go to the same way to think that uh, flat blades are very important objective of production for these groups. So with this blade are also some bladelets, bladelets which were used to produce uh, projected points. Uh, at La Fosse there are mainly uh, straight back points, so-called uh, blanchier points, very typical of the late Laborian tradition. Um, but we also have um, trapezoid back truncature, and that's one, one of the best results of La Fosse because we found, a, I think it's 50 uh, trapezoid back truncature. We knew that this kind of projectile were present in late Laborian sites, but for a long time people considered them to be intrusive from uh, Mesolithic or Neolithic components. Uh, with this very well preserved site, uh, with only one layer, we are now sure, sure sorry, 
that um, this protein point is typical of the delta volume tradition, and it is actually the first evidence of transverse uh, overhead uh, for prehistory. So with these typical late Laborian elements, we also found several small pedunculated points and oblique truncated points uh, at the close. And these elements um, are very similar to the one known in the APRF region. So it is very interesting to find on this side typical late Laborian influences, but also APRF region uh, influences. I will come back on this later, but it's, it's, it's a very in interesting point. Oh, sorry. So the site is well preserved because of this uh, context in, uh, in the bottom of the Valley River with uh, flooding seals and fine aluminum. And so we were able to recognize several, several uh, drain structures. Um, Looking at the distribution of the, of the elements um, and the identification of uh, clear wall effects, we were able to identify at least two 5 meter large uh, circular structures centered uh, around the uh, Earth. Um, and we also were able to identify cleaning activities in these structures with uh, a, re a reject of um, the largest elements, especially cores, on the wall of the structure. I can talk uh, hours about the site and with the distribution of each kind of tool, but I, I won't. But you can see very interesting patterns um, in the management of the of the of the artifacts in, inside the, inside the structure. So these evidences, um, as all the data from the technological study and useware study, uh, allowed to investigate on the status of the site. Um, the high density of artifacts, the large extension of the site, the emphasis on tool curation and the cleaning activities suggest a long occupation span of this site. Then, uh, the identification of diversified lead mapping skills also suggested diversified social group composition at levels. And finally, um, the important lead production activities, activities related to hunting, uh, skin crafting and other crafting activities suggest very various um, type of activities on the site. So we have a site with a long occupation span, diversified group, and large spectrum of activities. So we think it's a residential site. Uh, when we look at the raw material provisioning strategies, we think that um, various type of raw material were introduced to the site as cores, shed cores, blanks, or blocks. And we are in Brittany, that means very far away from any fleet outcrop. Uh, the closest one is probably 50 kilometers away. And so all these materials are coming from long distance, sometimes more than 300 kilometers. And more interestingly, I think, from every direction. From the north, from the south, from the east, but also from the west. It's not on the map that we have some things coming from this area here. Very few, but we have. So, I think that's very interesting because this result, um, the fact that the site was occupied by a diversified group involved in various activities, uh, but also the fact that we have evidence of various traditions from the north and from the south, um, is for me an evidence um, that allowed to propose the idea of a large uh, aggregation site for this period, the very end of the, of the upper valley. So it's only a hypothesis. I mean, uh, I'm very, I, I don't really like to, to, to give this type of hypothesis, but all the data we have uh, go to this way, so that's a hypothesis. But it fits pretty well with um, the paleoeconomic <coughs> model uh, suggested by my research in Western France, but also by my colleagues in Northern France and, and Paris Basin, um, of a big change in paleoeconomic strategies after the other, I mean, after the Azilian, uh, during this GS1 or OSN transition, where we think to have an increase, a great increase in task oriented sites. Um, the best example of this task oriented site are probably what we call the Bewazen site, what you call probably the long leg assemblages. 
Uh, that means sites with only vestiges uh, of the detached concentrations, no real grain structure, very few tools, only uh, bruise blades, you know, there's something very special. And so these sites were generally interpreted as a lipid workshop. But uh, the great input on, of the generalization of extensive user study, uh, sometimes the extensive um, study of the entire assemblages, um, allowed to get a better picture of this small task oriented side. Because we saw that even if we don't, even if we don't have a lot of retouch tools in these assemblages, a lot of the blades, fabric touch blades, were used as tools. A high proportion. So there is no tools, but with a lot of tools, real tools. Um, we also realized that uh, even if we, even if blades were exported from this site to other sites, some other blades were imported to this site from the site. So the recirculation of blades from one site to the other. So. Those sites are not only producer, but they are also receiver of blades. So these new elements um, change our, our, our picture, uh, change our view, our understanding of, of these dead resin sites. And now we are used to consider them uh, as skill sites uh, used for primal treatment of game, and where people take advantage of the presence of good raw material to produce new knives um, for the next hunt. So, of course, they produced a lot of long blades to make knives, but it was probably uh, in association with something else and probably to butchery. Okay. Um, so, if this model is correct, there is no reason for a lack of Belouazian long blade site in other regions than southern England and northern France. If the model is correct, we should find this type of site where we have good raw material. And that's not totally the case for the moment. Um, anyway, we, we, we found a site, a site sorry, a few years ago in center west France, where we have um, uh, very rare retouch tools, uh, a lot of twists of depitage, of depitage, a high proportion of core, and all these cores are discarded. Uh, very early in the reduction sequence. Probably because people produce large and long blades and they discard it. They just wanted large blades to make knives. So it, it is brand new, it's still in course, the study is still in course. Uh, the site is a surface site, so we have to be very careful on this data, but maybe we have very south of the normal region, maybe we have a site which could be, in terms of status, uh, a Belouazian or long blade site. So the Paleolithic -econom economic model um, we published a few years ago with my friend uh, Jeremy Jacquet um, tried to, um, to, to, um, to sum up uh, all this data, and I'm too late to, to describe it in detail. But this model is solely based on opener sites, and I think it is a BS. We need also to look at rock shelter. I mean, there is no rock shutter or open air site. We need to combine our vision of two types of sites. And when you look in southwestern France, uh, especially the site excavated by my friend uh, Mathieu Langlais, uh, you see that the data we have in the rock shutters, they didn't change uh, our model. Uh, we have residential site in rock shutter and also task oriented site in rock shutters. Um, so the study of Lafos um, brings several important results. Some of them are directly linked with the fact it is an open air site uh, because the good conservation of the spatial organization, by example, um, allowed us to bring interesting data about the site status and start building a new public economic model for the last uh, paleolithic communities. Open air sites clearly offer sites with a potential high archaeological resolution. So, that, in my opinion, that's what open air sites are interested in. Um, anyway, it is very important also in parallel uh, to develop research and work shelters. Even if they generally offer less good spatial resolution, <laughs> because uh, they were frequently reoccupied on prehistory, they generally offer useful complex photography. But beyond that, they also represent um, the easiest way to study small sites. 
and small size are very important, in my opinion, to understand hunter-gatherers economical system because they exist whatever the mobility system is, logistical, residential, and everything in between. Um, the problem with small sites is they are, they are very um, low archaeological resolution. It's very hard to find them in CRM archaeology or in survey. So rock shelters are a good way to investigate these small sites because they are very easy to spot in the landscape. So I'm in charge now of a research program called Tech Shelter uh, with Grégoire Marchand. And the site we discovered in the framework of this program, uh, we excavated a few of them, uh, early Azilian and Mesolithic, and all the sites we excavated in this context are always very task-oriented sites, like butchery site, hunting camp, it's always very, very task-oriented. So I want to finish on this. It's very important to focus also on this side to know these small sites which are complementary with this large opener site with a very high resolution, unfortunately. So that would be my conclusion. Thank you very much.